Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, coming to you from my office, and uh, I'm excited about tonight, but I want to talk to you just a few minutes today, and this won't go much longer than what we normally do, but I, these are different times, and I know what you're seeing on the television, I know what you're seeing uh, and hearing on radio, I know what you're reading about online, we are being bombarded wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, the virus, the spread of the virus, how many have died by the virus, the number who has the virus, or people who has the virus, the virus, the virus, the virus. And my friends, I, make, I dare not make light of this crisis that we're in. Uh, it is a real virus. It is a real pandemic. It is a real, that these things that are going on are real. But I want you to know that there are many things at work today uh, that's going on simultaneously. There is the virus, and then there's the coverage of the virus. Uh, there is the response to the virus. There is the federal response. Uh, there is the, 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 uh, the state response. There's the virus, and then there's the effects of the virus. And then there's the coverage of the virus and the effects of the coverage of the virus. The response to the virus and the effects of the response to the virus. And businesses are, are being closed and, and, and different things are happening. Restaurants shut down. Churches asked to not assemble as we have assembled. And various things are going on. And it's hard. It's hard unless you, you're walking in discernment and have your hand in the hand of the God of the Bible. It's hard to see through all of the clutter. It is the will of the devil. It is the will of, uh, uh, of those, the powers that be, to keep people afraid, to keep you uh, dismayed, to, to uh, listen, to, uh, to inform you, yes, but then to overload you with too much information. There is such a thing as information overload. And most certainly, uh, Bishop Wooden here is not suggesting by any stretch of the imagination that you bury your head in the sand, that you pay no attention, that you do not give heed to the advice that is given. But I am saying, my friends, the one thing that you don't hear which I think is the most important thing at all, of, of them all. None of the networks are saying, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and not before then, and I will heal their land. I will hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal the land. Second Chronicles chapter seven and verse 14. I'm here to say to you that the God of the Bible is in charge. And I want to encourage every one of you to practice the social distancing, uh, to, to what, practice uh, the proper washing of our hands and being hygienic. You know, the Bible, the Bible long ago speaks of being clean. So we want to be clean people. We want to be hygienic people. We want to be law abiding people. And, uh, and, but I want to inspire you, my friends. Uh, you need to know that this situation that we're facing is not extra biblical. It is not a situation where we need to take the Bible and, and close it up and take our churches and close the doors and take prayer and throw it out of the window and put all of our trust and faith in the federal government, in the politicians, in uh, the Senate and the House, uh, the White House, and, and all of these people, and just say, well, they're going to come up with a solution. No, 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 no. We know who to call on. We know who's in charge. Nothing, nothing catches the God of the Bible off guard. 
He knew God was aware that this was going to happen long before it happened. And, and let me tell you, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord speaks to these things. I can hardly wait to teach from the scriptures tonight. I, I, uh, there is something that I want to show you that is applicable to what we are facing right now. And I just want to say this, and I don't want to give away too much. All I want to say is this. Don't forget God. Don't forget the God of the Bible. Make sure you include him uh, in your plans and in your responses and in what you hear. And also, uh, do not throw aside. Do not discard as being, uh, you know, uh, that there are there there is a message that uh, that 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 is a subtle and not so subtle that uh, that the spiritual approach may not be warranted right now. It's not too wise. It's not wise uh, to attend church. It's not wise to, uh, uh, to, 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 for the saints to come together and pray. You got to have some sense. You know, you, you got to be wise. Well, let me tell you something. The wisest thing we can do is call upon the God of the Bible. And I'm going to show you tonight in the scripture where the people of God was fooled. They were hoodwinked. They were bamboozled because they put their trust in every approach except the spiritual approach. They put their, their trust in the scientific approach. They trusted science. They trusted their own natural wit. They trusted their eyes. They trusted taste. They trusted their ability to smell. They trusted their ability to reason. They trusted their ability to come to a proper conclusion. They trusted their intelligence. They trusted their leaders. They trusted society. They trusted, they trusted all of these approaches, and they did not put in play a spiritual approach, and they got hoodwinked. They got fooled. They, were, they, they got bamboozled. And one of the immediate results of them being tricked was that they were pulled into a war that they would have uh, otherwise never have been pulled into. And they were tricked into disobeying God. Let me tell you something. We're doing everything here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ to keep our church, as our normal standard has always been, clean, disinfected. We're doing what we can to obey the, uh, the, the, the directives from the White House, from the governor's mansion, from the CDC, from all of them. We want to, we want to, uh, uh, we've cut out the high fives and the low fives and the, uh, <laughs> you know how we do in church? We speak to our neighbor, grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor this, that, and the third, you know, slap your neighbor even. <laughs> I've just been a little, putting a little humor in here. But let me tell you, we, we, all of that, we, we can worship without that stuff. And quite frankly, uh, uh, well, good riddance. If it never comes back again, it's all right with me. Uh, that's not necessarily preaching. That m most of the time, that is to drive home a point and to, to inspire one another. It, it, it's, it's good in its place. You don't want to overdo it, but it's good in its place. But so all of the things that we're asked to do, we're, we're most certainly doing it. And I want to say to those who will say, well, Bishop, I, I, I don't feel comfortable uh, coming out to church. Well, I don't want you to do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. And, uh, and if you're in that age group where uh, you, 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 you're more susceptible uh, to the virus, uh, we do not demand that you stay home. But we, we certainly understand if you do. And if you come, then we certainly want to make sure the proper distancing is in place so that we would not uh, do anything to cause you to uh, heighten the likelihood that you might contract the coronavirus. To those good saints out there who love the Lord, who love the church, who are faithful to the Lord, but you got a cold or you suspect you have the coronavirus or you're sick. Uh, we want you, but my God, God love you. Make sure you stream service tonight and stay home. That would be a wise thing to do uh, for the health 
uh, of, of the whole. Uh, but for those who, uh, uh, who uh, like me, who look forward to coming to church tonight, we will be here teaching the word of the Lord. And I'm going to be teaching from the subject, the spiritual approach. Or better, don't forget to include the Lord. And what happens when we hear all of these things and we see all of these things and we're bombarded by all of these things and uh, people are coming to us and they're telling us things and we don't know whether it's true or not. We don't know who we can trust. You most certainly can't trust this media. Oh, you can't. It's hard to trust the government. Uh, uh, there are people today who are playing politics with this and suggesting that by calling a, a, a virus that originated in China by calling it a China, the China virus, that that is somehow uh, being racist and that's somehow playing the race card. But the Ebola virus was named after uh, the river uh, e Ebola where, where the, the virus originated. And, and most viruses, when you know what those acronyms are, uh, you know that the uh, the Mars virus, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, it was a virus that started in the Middle East. Guess where the Spanish flu started? So forth and so on. And you will see that there is no racism in that. But again, this is another example of things being thrown at people. And if you don't, you don't know how to see through the clutter, you'll get all confused and you get all, oh my, you get, you get, uh, uh, what, what, you get uh, where it's too much and the, 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 the fuses get blown and, uh, and the, the devil uh, will, 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 will have you where he wants you. So tonight we're going to be teaching the word of the Lord right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And just as, uh, you know, in good times, when everything is normal, <laughs> and, you know, we might be facing a, uh, a storm, rain, uh, you know, wind. Now, now there's an invisible enemy, this virus. I find that the Word of God is just as powerful and just as comforting on days, in days like these, and in times like these, in days like this and times like these, as they are when the sun is shining and everything is going right and, you know, it's your day and everything's clicking for you. Man, it's, God is good and worthy to be praised. And Oh, what a mighty God we serve. You know all the things we say. But I'll tell you, it's times like these where the faith really shows up. It's where I really, really get the comfort from the Lord because, you know, I hear the Lord whispering in my ear, hey, Patrick, I've got this. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Tell the nation to turn back to me. Tell them to stop slaughtering thousands of babies per day. Tell them to stop passing laws, uh, legalizing abominable behavior. Tell them, tell this great nation that I raised up that has given itself to idolatry over 2,000 different religions in America alone. Tell them to turn back to me. Remind them that there's still only two genders. I made them male and I made them female. Tell them that I am the God who controls the weather. I'm the God who controls the economy. I am the Lord who gives jobs. I am the Lord, Job said, who giveth and taketh. Oh, the illusion. It's an illusion that we're in charge, that we're running this show. If nothing proves that, this certainly should, because two to three weeks ago, we were cooking with gas. The, the, the cruise industry, best ever, uh, the airline industry, best ever. Restaurant industry, best ever. All of these industries, best ever. Record numbers, people selling houses, banks making money, everybody. Unemployment at, at historical lows. Two to three weeks later, all those gains have been erased. And we see people offering all kinds of solutions except saying to people, Pray, 
calling on the churches to pray. Instead of calling on the churches to close the doors, we need to be calling on churches, calling on pastors, calling on leaders. I didn't say the faith community. I said churches, pastors, leaders, Christian leaders to call on the God of the Bible. He's the God who answers by fire. That's what, that's what Elijah said. Since it's Baal is God, then serve him. We'll, we'll put it to the test. We'll put it to the test. And guess what? The God of the Bible answered by fire. And if we get through this, it's going to be because the God of the Bible answered. If we get a vaccine, God did it. And thank God for science and the hardworking people uh, in this country, in, in the CDC, in, the, in government laboratories, and these private industry labs. We appreciate every one of you. But listen, some trust in horses, others in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. We're going to walk in the scriptures, and the Lord God of the Bible is going to bless us real good. Now, now stay safe, keep your social distancing, uh, keep your hands washed, live holy. If you're sick, stay home. If you see someone coughing, they got a bad cold, avoid them. You know, do all the things that we're, that we're to do. Pray for our elderly citizens. Though, if you know someone who is sick in, I mean, shut in or at home, they can't get out, if you can bring them some food and help them out, do it. We're doing it here at the church. We're reaching out to people. I have, by the way, put a call into some of our senior workers who do these things on a weekly basis, and I shut them down. Not the ministry of giving food, but for those senior workers, and, you, and you, if you're a member of Upper Room, you know who they are, and they work. I said to them, you're too valuable. I want you to stand back. We're going to replace them with younger, stronger people, and we're going to still get the food out, but I'm going to take care of these great, great workers. Now, I love you. I'll see you tonight for Bible study right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ.